What's up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm going to be showing you the latest quads for ROM on the Redmi K20 Pro. And yes, I definitely said this is one of the best ROMs out there for the Redmi K20 Pro. Yes, it was having some problems on the like previous build of this one. This is the 10th July 2020 build by the way. And on the previous build, like it was 7th July or something, on that there was some problems like it was showing me black screen every time I reboot and every time I unlock the device with the fingerprint scanner, it was showing me black screen. But right now it is fixed and I have flashed it with the orange box recovery again. If you want to flash this ROM, here is a card for you. So right now, let me show you the about section here. Here, in, as you can see in the Android version, this is of course based on Android 10 and the paranoid Android version here, it says Quartz 4 as you are noticing here. And the security patch is latest of July 5th, 2020. And the stock kernel here is this 4.14.186 Paranoid Quartz for Raphael. And here is the build number. And in the system panel, let me show you, we do have a system updater right now. And you can check for updates, but this has some kind of glitch, I guess. Even on the previous build, as you can see, it was showing like this, which is kind of weird at the beginning. But yeah, this updater should work fine. Let me go back. We have the gesture settings. And here we get some customizations actually. So we have the jump to camera like this one and quick torch option is there. So you can, as you can see, it shows some gestures over here. Long pressing power button will enable the torch uh, when the device is locked, of course. Inside system gestures, we have the system navigation gesture. And if I go into the settings and as you can see, we have the gesture bar size adjustment. So yeah, the gesture bar size is right now pretty long as you're noticing the pill bar over here. So yeah, and two or three button navigation is there too. If you wanna use those old kind of things, and here we do have a full screen gestures. So if you enable that, it will even hide this build button and let you use the full screen real estate of the like, display. And here we have the swipe to screenshot option. Where you do get this share option and the edit option, then scrolling and the delete option over there. There is the adaptive playback option too. If you need that, let me go back. We have the screen out gesture. So double tap to wake is there, but you can also use this to a lot of features like open camera or something. So yeah, these things really matter that you do have a lot of customizations here. And there is also the quick torch again over here. Now, let me show you as you can see from here, my screen is locked and from here, if I press and hold the power button, as you can see, the long press for torch actually works. Now, let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed from the always on display here. Did not unlock. Now it did. Let's try it again. And here, as you can see, let's do it, okay. The fingerprint scanner speed isn't too slow, but I think it's a little bit slower at some times, but most of the time it is quite fast and reliable. As you are noticing, let me do it from the lock screen itself. And as you can see, from the lock screen, it's very, very fast. And from the always on display too, sometimes it is very, very fast, but sometimes I have noticed that it is a bit slow or it is not quite accurate from the always on display. But most of the time, I would say the accuracy rate would be 90% here. So you won't need to actually worry about the figment scanner over here. It is not too bad, of course. Now let me try with night light turned on from the always on display with night light turned on, it unlocked. Now let's try with the left thumb, unlocked. Now let's try from the lock screen when the night light is turned on. Not recognized, okay. So right now it did. I think I moved the finger too fast. And as you can see, right now it unlocks super fine. No issues with the fingerprint scanner here. And inside security, we do have some more options like this face unlock and app locker, which I'll show later on. But first, let me set up the face unlock. Okay, so the setup was pretty quick, as you can see. Right now, let's just double tap on the home screen to lock and now double tap to wake. And as you can see, as soon as I double tap over here on the screen to wake the device, it like pops out the front camera and it unlocks the device. So that is very cool. And here we do have this swipe to unlock feature. So if you enable that, you will need uh, like swipe up to get the camera out of the like pop up motor. So as you can see right now, if I double tap, and right now it does not pop out the camera automatically if i swipe up only then the front camera will like pop out so yeah this is a really cool feature i would say and talking about the app lock yes it is there and it does work fine it's not a problem but here i have noticed some amount of problems here and as you can see even the app lock works with face unlock as you can see 
right now it unlocked with the face unlock only but i'll remove the face data for the time being so as you can see it shows like this whenever a app is locked and it shows that use pin or fingerprint over here and one thing that i have noticed as you can see right now it unlocks super fine no issues with the app lock here but let me show you the issue here so let's assume we have some kind of pop-up on the display like this chat head over here as you can see or any picture in picture kind of thing so if we have this on the screen right now if you try to open a like lock tab and if you try to use the fingerprint scanner as you can see it, it does not simply work i'm tapping the fingerprint scanner but i'm pretty sure it's not activating the fingerprint scanner because it does not give me a haptic feedback over here so yeah this bug i have noticed and this is pretty annoying when there is a pop-up on the screen i have to like pull it down or close it then only it will work as you can see right now it will work so this bug is there i just wanted to mention this is how the stock dialer ui looks like and there is no call recording option even though it should have a call recording option it looks like because it's not a google dialer but normal volte calling and stuff is working fine here and let me show you one thing in the network settings as you can see if i go into this mobile plan it does not let me in and as you can see there is no wi-fi calling option over here but let me search for it okay so as you can see use wi-fi calls to improve quality wi-fi calling so if i tap on this i go like into this settings i don't know how to go in over here from the settings panel so from here as you can see we have this wi-fi calling and i have it enabled so yes the wi-fi calling option is actually there but you have to search for it in the settings and in terms of calling stuff let me tell you that like in whatsapp calls and stuff there if you plug in a headphone the mic volume could be a little lower over here in this room so that i have noticed like from my end the mic's volume was really really low the other party was constantly complaining so yeah the mic volume with headphones and stuff could be a little bit lower in this room so that i have noticed now let me quickly talk about the stock launcher here as you can see this is actually a paranoid launcher let me show you to the left of the home screen we do have this personalization panel and google's discover page is there and swiping down on the home screen gets you to the quick settings panel of course and swiping up gets you to the app drawer you cannot simply disable this suggestions option widgets and stuff are working fine over here totally and in the settings panel there is not a lot of customizations you can like change the icon packs if you want to then we have the notification dots and stuff show google app option is there but simply you cannot disable this suggestions area which i do not like and here we do have the double tap to sleep anywhere on the home screen again and this works flawlessly no issues and in the quick settings panel let me show you we do have a screen recorder as you can see this is how it looks like you can choose the audio from internal to microphone or you can totally disable the audio for the screen record if you want to but there is no like resolution or fps changing option for the screen recorder now let me talk about the stock camera well this is a old google camera which i do not like at all and as you can see the front camera and stuff should work right away as you can see but I don't like this camera app so i have already installed the anx camera if you don't know how to install it you can watch the first part of this video i've showed how to install anx camera and as you can see it is working flawlessly and all the lenses with this anx camera are working fine i've also installed the 48 megapixel fix so that is why it is working totally fine with this like portrait mode and stuff and in video mode let me show you we do have up to 4k 60 fps mode for the rear camera and for the front camera there should be 1080p 30 fps up to option now let me jump into the settings and show you the battery settings here this is how the battery se setting section looks like we have the screen on time on the bottom and last full charge you can see when you did it and battery percentage you can elevate from here but no battery icon changing customizations i guess in the ui and then we have the battery manager and stuff if you want this battery saver is there and by the way even without battery saver this rom is amazing with battery life this is the like by far most amazing battery life i have got on the redmi k20 pro and this is that kind of rom i have got about 10 plus hours of screen on time with this rom again and you can see the screenshots right like it is amazing with the battery life and i still had 30 percent plus juice left so it can definitely give you 10 to 11 hours of screen on time and that is amazing even fast charging works super fine here you should not worry the fast charging actually works flawlessly the phone does not heat up at all over here like too much over here even with fast charging so that is really cool and by the way it does show up the charging info on the lock screen too so that is good whenever you're plugging in you can see the charging info on the lock screen itself or the always on display 
And one thing that I thought I should mention here because the earlier or previous builds having the 66 Hz mod by default over here enabled. So earlier refresh rate of this ROM was 66 Hz of the screen but right now it is back to 60 Hz. So I thought about mentioning this one. In the display settings we have the night light then styles and wallpaper section is there and you can customize the theme just like this and you have this much accent colors over here as you are noticing. So yeah, let me go back actually in the clock section, we have some like these four clocks option is there for the lock screen. Grid option is there, you can change the grids over here. And in the wallpaper section, we have this on device wallpapers, looks really, really beautiful. And I haven't changed the like wallpapers, but yeah, you can of course change to these mini wallpapers over here. These look amazing. And I have also installed some MIUI 12 live wallpapers, so they should work fine. If you want these MIUI 12 live wallpapers, here is a card for you. Now let me scroll down, we have the colors set to boosted by default and then we have the screen saver, lock screen display etc. The pulse thing is there, this is the edge lighting. So for notifications it works flawlessly. In the like icon manager we have the wall TV, Wi-Fi etc icon. So yeah, headset, Bluetooth etc icons you can enable from here of course. Pocket detection is there if you want that. But there is no DC dimming option over here in this ROM like in the display settings as you can see. There is ambient display options but no DC dimming option is there. In the sound settings, one thing that disappoints me is that there is no Mi Audio DRAC. I don't really miss that because the sound output is great with the headphones like via Bluetooth 2. The sound output is great by default itself. I did not have to tweak it at all. But yes, I would have loved to see like the Mi Audio DRAC over here. And you can disable the screenshot sound, touch sounds, touch vibration, etc. In the vibration and haptics, we have the in-call vibration or the in-call haptics and vibrate for calls is there. You can change the ringtone vibration pattern from here too. Now let me talk about the performance. Well, the daily driving performance have been great. I did not have any black screens or random reboots or even little bit of stutters here. The ROM is really, really smooth. Let me open some of the apps and show you guys the app on speeds and the RAM management over here on this ROM. Let's open Facebook. Now Twitter, Play Store, Instagram, now let's open Spotify, Google Home, YouTube. Now let's just open all the apps from memory again. And as you can see, all the apps do stay in memory. No issues with the memory management that I could find here. Everything is buttery smooth in this UI and you can switch between apps just like this. As you can see, it is pretty fast, I would say. The whole UI stays pretty fairly fast. Even though this is a 6 GB RAM unit, the whole UI stays fast. No issues with the app no speeds or the memory management, even though the screen refresh rate has been dropped up to 60 FPS here. And here is the Android 2 and Geekbench score of this ROM. And the DRM info shows as level 1 here, so you should not worry about Netflix or Amazon Prime 1080p videos over here in this ROM. And as you can see, it passes the safety net test so that means you can use banking apps right out of the box you should not worry about it and whenever there is a new notification as you can see it shows this kind of clear all button over here like oxygen os so this is really cool you can just tap it once and the notifications will go away of course and some things to notice here that like for some features like the advanced reboot and stuff you have to tap and hold on the advanced like on the restart button i mean to get the advanced reboot features if you just tap reboot once from this power menu, it will just restart normally. So yeah, these things you gotta keep in mind. And whenever you are setting up the ROM for the first time, when you are pulling down the like quick settings panel and stuff, it will show that if you want to enable the quick pull down or something on like over here, kind of a notification will appear. So you have to just tap yes, then you can use the quick pull down feature over here. And one thing to mention is that like there is no FPS info option that I could not simply find over here as you can see. Let me show you the quick toggles here and here as you can see there is no option to add the fps info over here at least by default and after a reboot i have noticed one thing that the fingerprints scanner option appears there but it does not actually work so i have to enter a pin at this point after a reboot so thank you so much for watching this video guys give it a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel now if you have not yet this is tito from kd index signing off for today and i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye bye now